Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, February 26th, 2018, and it is 7.20, did I say that? 7.27 in the morning. And we are at the beginning of a new week. We are looking at, um, well, that angle. I, I only need to fix this camera where it's at. Anyways, um, we have some activity and moves going on. I need to pull up our trades from last week. Last Friday, rather. All right. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody took a little break from the weekend. I was gone helping my family move my grandparents. And we had a blizzard. But it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Good to see and help out family. Uh, okay, let's take a look at what we've got going on. So we're gonna start this, uh, we're gonna start looking at and doing, uh, probably for a couple of weeks, we're gonna be looking at trading using the Ichimoku system. I'm gonna still use my GAN analysis to help confirm those trades, but you know, for now we are going to be using kind of a little short activity where we'll be using the Ichimoku system as we're moving along. So we're gonna use that as our bias for moving forward here. wants to do that okay we had I have to refresh that we had uh, one two three four five six seven trade opportunities on Friday that we were looking at um, the first of which I'm not sure what's going on here uh, the first of which was a euro short. We want to go short at 122.8. Um, we, what in the world? I'm unsure what's happening with trading view. Well, that worked. Okay. I don't know what that was. Okay, so we had a short on uh, the euro at 122.8. You know, we, we really kind of had a flat move, you know, over over the day on Friday. Not a whole lot of activity going on. Um, you know, we're just kind of kind of just farting around a little bit. So not a lot of opportunities there. We may have one today. Our next trade that we looked at was the Aussie dollar. The Aussie, we wanted to short at 78.25, and we did catch a little bit there. But you know, unless you took um, unless you took profit early, it kind of rebounded against us a little bit overnight. Going, uh, you know, when trading opened yesterday <coughs> evening afternoon. New Zealand dollar, we had a short looking at uh, 72.94, or we were looking to go short at a pullback to 73.20. Now this one is working and this one is still active. And this is one I'm looking to take. Pound dollar, uh, we went short at, we wanted to go short at 139.29. And we really didn't get that. We really didn't get to reach down to that area. We've just kind of been bought up here. Uh, you know, not a lot of activity going on there. Euro pound, we wanted to go short at 87.96. And that one did work out. 
I actually did not take that trade, even though I had it there. Still seeing some nice break down there, though. It's good. And then the uh, UJ. We wanted to go long at 107.12. Uh, we did get there, but then we pretty much sold off in the afternoon, came back down to test this value area, and we kind of bought back up. We have a kind of an interesting um, uh, pattern forming here. I'm going to go over some of those. But, you know, for the time being, um, let's, uh, let's check out the current condition of these markets. Um, Sorry, <laughs> chapstick, my lips are chapped. Moving in the cold weather. Okay, let's start with the Euro and let's take a look again at our, our uh, Ichimoku system. All right, and let's, let's just take a peek here. We're looking at this on the hourly, okay? So um, we've got Quick review, we have really four main components of the Ichimoku system, okay? We have the cloud, which are these kind of colored blobs on the screen, the, the, and what those colored blobs are, it's the, the top and the bottom are these two lines here, all right? We have the blue line, which is the conversion line. That's a fast moving average, and then the red is our baseline and that's a slow moving average except it's not an average of the close of the open it's the average it's the average of a midpoint so we have a a 9 and a 26 uh, moving uh, average and they're of the midpoint all right and this these lines are thrust forward those periods so let's um, they're thrown forward if we look at here, displaced, they're displaced forward 26 periods, okay? So what are those lines? If we if we get rid of this, this, get rid of the back, all right, sorry. Yeah, get rid of the backgrounds. And, oh, you know what? Let me get rid of one more thing so you can see it. And if we take, just look at the line here. So we can see that, oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm uh, having a Monday. There we go. So we can see that the baseline and sorry, the baseline is the red and the conversion line is the blue. We can see that the cloud lines, those are just this is this is just the price action thrusted forward on the chart, okay? And then the cloud colors in the the gap between these lines. So if the conversion line is above the baseline, it's green, and if it's below it, it's red. All right. And so that's pretty much the principle. I mean, don't let that confuse you so much. But I don't like to have these lead lines on here. I think they just I don't really believe they're necessary. The cloud is what is the most important. All right. Now, and again, the lagging span, that is the current price action. So just like those two, uh, the two lines of uh, the, uh, um, the uh, uh, conversion and the baseline are thrust forward, we have the lagging line is the price action thrust backwards, 52 periods. So this is what I want to do is I take this line and I will hide everything else on the screen. So the blue line is just our price action instead of candlesticks, it's just a line. But you can see that the, the, uh, the price action is thrust back. So the lagging line is the current price action moved back, okay? So you can see here, here, and it's just back there. And that'll all become important here as we move on. And then on the rest of my chart, I just have, I have a, a four hour and an eight hour, okay? And I just use the clouds for that, all right? So this orange is a four hour 
actually I use their lighting spans they're really hard to see but that's I don't want them cluttering up the screen so we have a four hour cloud and then this blue one's an eight hour cloud all right we'll just take those off for now okay now let's take a look and review those rules so we only want to go short when we are below the cloud in price and we only want to go long when we are above the cloud in price okay so what happens if we're inside the cloud well that's what the ichimoku system is really great at. it tells us when not to trade if we are inside the cloud that means that we are in a consolidation area and then you also want to look at the clouds to notice how wide they are or how skinny they are. So this kind of activity down here, this isn't really a signal of strength at all. When the cloud, when price is near the cloud and it's very thin, it's a good sign it's not going to hold. It's kind of a heads up. Um, it's probably one of the only times when I would ever consider taking a short or going the opposite direction is right here. But I also want to look at what does that look like related to the four hour cloud. That's a good trade. You know, I'm looking at the four hour cloud. Um, when prices are trending, you know, and they're, let's say we're trading up here, if you notice this price action here. So we see that price is above the cloud, but we don't want to take a trade until the lagging span exits the cloud, too, okay? Even though price is above the cloud, we don't want to get a fake out. We want to wait for a confirmation of the lagging span moving out as well. So we would have taken that trade, okay? We would have taken that trade right here, okay? Or rather right here. Now, as price is moving up, we, we want to just stay with it. But where do, you buy, where do you buy on pullbacks? Let's say you missed the move, you want to get on a pullback. Where are you buying a pullback? Well, there's a couple areas. I don't ever buy on a pullback to the conversion line. I'm only looking at, at three areas. I want to buy on a pullback to the base or the top of the cloud or the very bottom of the cloud. And the thicker the cloud is, the higher probability that you have a, a price reversing off of it, okay? We can also use our oscillators to help us figure out um, um, what, it, what, what we have going on there. So. this chart oops so looking at this chart and I you know we have some fib levels from last week drawn on here from the swing to swing and um, we are looking at you know a probable short coming in why well we were we really got kind of stopped up around uh, we found some resistance a couple times at this level and uh, and it's right above the the uh, the right near that four hour chart. Where are we at on the eight hour? Same thing. We're kind of trending up against the bottom of the eight hour cloud. Okay. You know, we if we want to zoom back, we were trading above it. Now we're kind of inside of it and showing some weakness to go higher. So we're looking at a good short opportunity here, and our risk is really limited. And this is the great thing about the Ichimoku system is that you kind of have a defined stop area and that's a you know a little bit above the cloud here so on the euro I'm probably gonna to want to wait until I get below I'm still below the cloud but now I'm inside of it I'm a little bit above it but I'm not showing any real strength here so I'm looking to short at a break down to 122.88 All right, and then I am looking at, where am I at? Let's get UJ. How is UJ trading? So UJ, you know, last week, a week, little bit week before, you know, we're trading up, we're back above our cloud. Then we kind of fell back down. We entered in the four hour cloud and didn't want to stay there. And we kind of touched outside of it. Now we're actually found some support at the bottom of the cloud, okay? And we're above the conversion line. I'm looking at my one hour 
and I'm looking at how we're trading that one hour. Um, we're looking like we've got a little bit of strength here. I'm referring to my oscillators. On the hourly, it's not the greatest buy area. But on the eight hour, we're really pretty flat to trending up. Uh, we, you know, this is a, this is kind of a kind of a a, a a buy condition that we have set here. The four hour, kind of neutral, but again, we're we're looking at doing a buy here. So a good buy zone. There's a couple of them. Um, we could go in right now, or we could wait till we break above the cloud over here with the lagging span. So we're probably looking at one. 107.5 um, couple of options there Aussie dollar okay now we have we had a cross above the cloud, but this is a, this is a sign of weakness, sign of rejection. You know we got back into this area of the eight and the four hour cloud, but we were really rejected when we got into it. Um, you know the one hour had a big you know sell here. The four and the eight hour are are extended, so they're signaling a a uh, these are signaling a sell condition. The four and the eight. And so we should look at a short opportunity, um, you know, even right around here, you know, we're below the baseline, but we're above the cloud. Now, why am I saying, okay, you said, like John, you just said, only go long above the cloud, only go short below the cloud. Um, that's why I have two other cloud indicators, the four and the eight. Um, because we have broken down already below the, the one, four, and eight, and we retested that eight and come down again. I'm looking at this acting as strong resistance. Look at this thickness of this eight hour cloud. That's a fairly thick cloud. And we got rejection off of it, so we should look at lower prices. So, you know, even looking at it right now, that's a good short area. see we got New Zealand dollar New Zealand dollar we're in kind of a consolidation area um, you know we are we found rejection inside the cloud but I'm actually gonna want to wait all right I'm gonna want to wait to get short uh, below this eight hour cloud all right it's kind of a tighter range you know whether we get short over here or down here or we could have a long bias it's nice when we have this kind of area and this activity where we could probably get in a little early on a move. Um, you know, we could probably consider going short on a break of the one hour base, trending towards the eight hour. You know, we traded below it, the eight hour, four and one, got about back up, but we did not, we, we did not find any further activity to move higher here. So we should look at this consolidation breaking down a little bit. And, the, and you know, again, if we look at the New Zealand dollar, compared to its peers, you know, it really has not had a big corrective move. You know, it's below this trending line. We got rejected at this pivot. That should be a good tell. Um, so we should we should see some falling prices here. I think the New Zealand dollar is, is late and due and ready for a drop. Yeah, that's a, that's a good short area right there. With our stop kind of above here, so we got a good short area, or if we want to be conservative, we could say at one seventy-two eight. You can okay. Mm. I don't like it. Not looking like a good trade one way or the other. Pound dollar. Okay, we might have something going on here. Nice consolidative area. So we have we have a couple ideas for longs and shorts, although this is a pretty uh, ugly signal. Um, we're only going to want to go short 
when the lagging span breaks below all four of these clouds. Okay, the lagging span on this screen is this black line. And we're only one going to go along when the lagging span actually breaks above this cloud. Okay, so we're looking at we have a long trade probably at 141. And a short trade down at 138, 138.9. Okay, how does that look at compared to <clears throat> Yep, rejected that pivot. Pretty good, pretty good sell signal there. All right, let's see, we've got Euro Pound. Let's look at it from our GAN. Okay, so we have fallen down and found some support here off of the the uh, the mid inner, and that's going to be a strong support area. In fact, we're looking at a supportive zone right there. Looking at it on our on our uh, cloud, we have supportive buying on the eight and the four, with some selling bias on the uh, on the one hour. Now we have fallen through on the hourly up here and i'm looking at now okay here's the eight hour do you see this line here this is the lagging span of the eight hour that's right there we want to get below here okay we are below the cloud in the one and the four now we're looking for the eight okay we want to be below the eight and so we should probably expect some type of pullback to probably the 88 area. So that's a good area to short. Kind of a simple kind of a setup there. Again, Ichimoku means the market at a glance. We get a pretty good look and viewpoint of the market using this style of analysis. <clears throat> okay dollar swiss we could be entering some bullish territory here with the dollar swiss we really could um you know we are we're inside the cloud of the four hour still we're inside the cloud of the one hour but we are catching quite we got some really good buy structure on the eight and the four hour we kind of got a good opportunity maybe to go long here, but we probably want to wait on a on a break above the one hour inside here and uh, want to wait for it to go higher and then come back down. Um, I'm, I don't like the trade setup right now. I'm not looking at it. The other pair I wanted us to take a peek at was the, uh, the, uh, the, Aussie dollar, Japanese yen. This is kind of a, a fun trade. But right now, I'm really not looking at a trade. Um, actually, we might have one, but um, I'm not going to look at that one. I want to wait for something better to show up. Okay, so we've got those trades going on. Let's take a look at our cryptocurrencies. Now, our cryptos, we have had a lot of kind of dull move. You know, we when we were looking at, um, probably was that last week, Wednesday? Was that the 20th? Tuesday ever since Tuesday when we crossed above this down angle Let me bring it up to four hour So this is the this black line here I'll make it a little thicker That's our downtrend angle from the all-time high all right So every time we've kind of gotten close we did cross above it a little bit over here But then we we really kind of fell down and um, you know, we've just kind of been trading within this arc. Now, looking at it, this is a 45 degree angle and we're back above it. We're above the arc and we are in a, a, a fairly supportive, uh, we're in a fairly supportive area. We'll want to see how price responds because we are, we are catching a little bit of divergence there. Um, this here so 
Just checking that stuff there. Okay, I was just sorry, just looking at another chart. Ethereum. Okay, now Ethereum's got an interesting chart. Um, Ethereum might have.
Yeah, I just realized that I was on mute for quite amount of time here. Shoot. Let me go over the stuff really again. Actually, I'm going to stop the stream and I'm going to restart the stream, okay?